What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Layout tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to talk about some tips that you can use for setting up your styles inside of SketchUp and then taking your models into layout. As you know styles affect the way your models look and so therefore you're going to be using your styles a lot to adjust the way that your models look inside of layout. So before I get started I wanted to remind you that the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course is closing enrollment tonight at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. The SketchUp Essentials for Architecture is a course that I've created to give you a start to finish workflow for working in SketchUp and layout. So the course starts with the basics of modeling in SketchUp for architecture, and then we go directly into creating a SketchUp model and taking it into layout so that you can learn how to create different kinds of plans like floor plans and elevations and site plans and other plans as well. So it's a step-by-step -step course that takes you from the very beginning to the very end, showing you the whole process. Process. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to take your layout game to the next level, make sure you check that out at the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture.com. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as most of you know, styles are built into SketchUp and they allow you to adjust the way that your model looks. So you can adjust everything from your different line weights to the way your faces look. So you can adjust your edges to make lines thicker or thinner. You can adjust faces, things like that. You can make all of those changes inside of your styles. And these are really important for taking our models into layout in order to create plans for a lot of different reasons. And so the first reason is performance. Performance. And so when you're working with a model like this one, the first thing you want to do is if you've ever worked in a SketchUp model that has just a bunch of stuff in it and it runs really slow, one of the reason for that can be your styles settings. And so we can set things up so that things run a little bit faster inside of SketchUp. And so what we want to make sure that we do is I've taken this house model and this is a model I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. It's the Modern White House by Ismael Z. And so you can download this and follow, follow along. I've added some trees and some terrain just to illustrate that sometimes when you're working with a house model or something like this, there's things that you can turn off in order to improve your performance. So like for example, I've taken all my trees and my terrain and I've put them on a site layer. And then I've set up a working view where all of those are off. And so that's my first tip is set up, set up a working view inside of SketchUp where you have all of your site stuff turned off, but also where you have a style like this one and you do things like turning off profiles. So when I turn off profiles, you're gonna notice that this style now has a little clock next to it. The little clock is an indicator that you've selected settings in your styles that are going to make your model run faster. So if you want a faster style associated with your working view, make sure you find one with a little green clock next to it. So now we've set up a view where we have a fast style selected and the heavyweight models from our site turned off. So once you have all of that set up, you just go to view animation and you just add a scene with those settings enabled. So, and you can see how I've created an all on scene so I can see all of my site stuff if I need to get back to that. I also have an exterior working view. As I go, I would also create a level one and a level two working view so I can access those really quickly. But that's the first tip is create a lightweight working view. So the second thing I want to talk about is creating a black and white style and also a color style. So you can see how right now my floor plan has been created by taking a section cut across this building. And at the moment this is set up to have a color style. So this means that all of the textures are turned on and all of the colors are turned on so that this is a color style. And what I've done is I've come in here and I've saved that as a style. It's my color floor plan style. And we'll talk a little bit more about saving these in a second but what I want to do is I also want to create another style that's going to be my black and white style and what this allows is this allows me to switch back and forth between color and black and white really quickly so in order to do that all you have to do is just go into your styles and you can select one to build off of and then under the edit tab we're gonna go over into our face settings and with our face settings, there's an option in here for display in hidden line mode. This will turn off colors and textures on your faces, leaving you a black and white style right here. Now the only problem with this style is at the moment you can't see your couch and some other things anymore. So we wanna make sure we go into our edge settings and turn on profiles. So once you do that, what you have is you have a black and white floor plan style. Well, we don't wanna save over our color floor plan style. What we wanna do 
do is we want to click this button right here for create new style. And I'm just going to label this one JG underscore BW floor plan style. And we'll go ahead and we'll save that. We'll update the style with the changes. And so this is important because I don't want to save my floor plan with the black and white style enabled, but what I do want to do is I want to be able to access this over in layout. So now I'm just going to do a file save. And what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to go over into layout once this is done saving. Well, now I can set up my plan view over in layout so that it shows that view. But then if I decide really quickly that I want to switch this to black and white, you can actually go into your SketchUp model settings and under styles, you can find that JG black and white color floor plan style. And you can see how I can actually switch back and forth by selecting the different styles in here. So if I get my views all set up and I have my bottom viewport here and I decide I want this to be black and white, all I have to do is go find that black and white style that I've created and select it in order to switch between black and white and color plans. So by doing that, that makes that really easy for me to come in here and make the change on the back end without having to set up a whole bunch of color and black and white tabs um, inside my SketchUp model. So my next tip is when you're working with your different styles and you go into your in model section. So if you go to select in your style section of your tray and you click on in model, that's going to show you all of the styles that you have in here. Well, my recommendation is if you create a custom style to you, so something that you're actually using, I would recommend labeling that with your initials before the style name. And so what that's going to do is when these are in here, these are being sorted alphabetically. Well, now all of your styles, instead of being named black and white floor plan or color floor plan, they're all sorted in here alphabetically and so that means that everything I've created with my initials is grouped together. So now I can find those really quickly just by clicking back and forth across these. So and that also makes this easier over in layout because if you click the list view you can see how even though these are not sorted alphabetically, you can see in here all of the styles that you've created that were created by you because this brings in all of the styles from your SketchUp model into layout. So by labeling these in this way, you can find them quickly so that you know exactly what styles you've created and that you're using. So another tip that I have is more of a style tip. And so what that is, is it's going to affect the way your model looks. But a lot of the time, what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to create front elevations or side elevations. And so you can see how I've set up this black and white elevation in here. But the problem is I have no indicator of depth whatsoever. So when you look at this, you can't really tell what's in front of or behind or anything like that. Well, one good way to add a depth indicator is to go into your shadows and turn them on. And so when you turn your shadows on, you can see how now you get shadows in here coming off of your roof. So it's coming off of my roof, it's coming out of the uh, areas that are kind of sticking out over here. Well, that means now in my front elevation view, when I turn those on, I can kind of tell what's in and what's out. And it's a really easy change to make in order to uh, adjust the way that your elevation views look. You can also adjust where the shadows go by using the slider in here. So adjusting the time of day and the time of year, you can adjust all of this. But it's a really easy change to make if you want to add a depth indication. So you can see how this gives you a little bit of a visual indicator that you've got little mullions sticking out over here. So it's just a better view. So that's a really quick way to do that. And then all you have to do is just turn your shadows on and then right click and update your view or update your scene. And now those shadows are going to show up inside of this scene. So if I save this and then I go over into layout and I update the view that I have showing my front elevation scene. So if I just right click on this and update my model reference, those shadows are going to turn on and you can see how this is just, first of all, it's much more interesting, but it's also more useful because you can kind of tell where the depth is using those shadows. And it's really easy to add and also to turn off. And then finally, sometimes 
this is more setting up a view than a style tip, but sometimes you want your view to be aligned with something. Um, so sometimes you don't have a building that's perfectly square, right? So like this building, for example, this face comes across at an angle. And so it's easy to create a front elevation that's straight up and down because all you have to do is just uh, turn on your parallel projection, then use the first person camera tool or the position camera tool to click and drag and position this along the green axis. The problem is what that doesn't allow you to do is that doesn't allow you to it, it doesn't really allow you to align perfectly with faces like this one. So it's a lot harder for me to come in here and set up a scene like this. I mean, you can do it, but you can see how I'm not aligned properly and my clipping plane is getting all weird and it just doesn't quite do what we want it to do. And so what we can do to align our camera view with those faces is you can actually double click in here to get in to select the raw face. And if I select the raw face or if I right click on it and I click align view, that's going to align your camera view with that face. And so if you turn parallel projection on, you can see how now I have a view that's not straight up and down, but instead it's aligned perfectly with this angled face. So that way I've created an actual elevation view that's aligned with that face, as opposed to this other one, which is aligned straight up and down, but that's a problem because this face is diagonal. So I could just come in here and I could just select this face, align view, and as long as parallel projection is turned on, you can see how that gives you a really great aligned elevation view without having to do a whole lot of work in order to get it. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you have any style tips that you use when working inside SketchUp and Layout? I just love having that conversation with you guys. Um, remember, the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course is closing enrollment tonight at 11.59 p.m. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to check it out at the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.